Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be off to a running start. I've got quite the little game here, a one versus one in the darkness of Simois. Yes indeed, fighting in the north shall be Stephen J.F. or Stephen or... I'm not entirely sure how he wants that pronounced nonetheless, here he is. Fighting for the Americans, fighting for the 1st Infantry Division, holding the small French town opposing him shall be our good friend Vlad. Vlad as the Kampfgruppe Vlad. Composed mainly of 17th SS Panzer Grenadier troops, with some support from the Panzerlehr, where we needed of heavy armor support. So a right little game here. And what shall we start? We're in fact seeing a free pioneer start up for Vlad. No structures going up here. What does this mean? Well, this means he's probably going for a forward barrack start. Some more being one of those games where that actually sort of reasonably works. And there we go. The third. Pioneer essentially, the first one goes up here and secures what they're building. On this side of the map, it usually gets this building that becomes the Ford Barracks. I suppose you could do that one too, but um, I don't really see that though. And you don't see that building at, at all use, I believe, except for some. And we are seeing a usual two engineer and rifleman right start though up for Stephen or Stephen or. Well, just call him Stephen, sounds more American. Heck yeah. By the way, we are seeing a bit of barbed wiring here, which can work, although some players of the high ranking also sort of say, never mind, because if an engineer pops in him, but basically cuts the wire, then that's wasted effort, they can be used to take points, so it's sort of a bit, you know, how do you do that, and we're seeing barbed wire going down here to essentially protect this area from these getting rushed right away while their false gun is on the way, nice little move there from Vladi, and yes, I'll refrain from calling him Vladi anymore, sounds a bit condescending. Well, at least not nice. Well, it's meant nicely. Uh, never mind. Right from the moving in, Pioneer's getting up just in time as the right from moving in with the M1 Garands and the M1 Carbine. And False Grenades returning a bit of fire for the Fatherland. For glory. Well, there are four bags all set up in the marketplace with, well, if there was anything in it, fresh access to fruit, I suppose. Engineers moving out here, but coming under fire, the false grenades are a bit surrounded on all sides, not entirely sure where to go. More false grenades on the way, and usually when you go for the forward barrack start, you also tend to go pretty heavy on the false grenades. In fact, you can only false grenades. Not entirely sure why you can't get anything else, but you tend to go pretty aggressively there, and then of course you tend to use all the fuel safe from going a forward barracks and then go for something else, like say, the Sturm Armory. That's the next thing. Pioneers, they're coming under heavy fire from the riflemen. Second false gun team ready. Securing the munitions here. Riflemen putting towards the north. And looks like Stephen is moving most of his okay. troops towards the north as well. So there's going to be a larger fight up there. Lots of false guns, lots of engineers, pioneers, riflemen all converging on this area. And there we go. First engagement. Pioneers are coming under pretty heavy fire. Not looking too good. One false grenade already bites dust, right from moving in, and they, yes, indeed, they are flanking the troops right here. Again, remember, even light cover like this is directional, and in this case, some of the, most of them are, in fact, quite exposed. So there we go, several down pioneers fighting here, but engineers force them away. In reality, it might have been the other way, since pioneers were actually much better combat troops than American engineers. I suppose they did it for balance purposes or whatever, although then again... False Grenades could have been larger teams. Well, thoughts, thoughts. Certainly things have changed. For example, in some of the earliest variants, apparently of coming here, False Grenades actually had assault rifles rather than MP40s and an upgrade. I think you can actually find some screenshots of that. Or some old video clips. But there we go. False Grenades guarding the rifleman. There we go. Up to 15 men, of course, able to reinforce right here at the forward barracks. And advancing for the Fatherland. Engineers still laying down bar wire, it seems like, to sort of ensure no one can disturb them in their job. And false grenades certainly cannot cut barbed wire. And meanwhile, some pioneers doing a bit of work here, getting run off by the rifle. And I believe Vlad has already lost one pioneer team. Quite tragic. And looks like the rest of Vlad's troops are now focusing right over here in the western half, securing fuel, denying fuel to the American. And oh, gee, little Stephen laying down some mines here. So, of course, any pioneers or whatever might be lured into that and, of course, take some damage. Jolly good show, but, of course, you have to remember, in those cases, this can actually end up as a bit of a trap, of course, as you might be forced to retreat right through the German troops or whatever might be arriving from this area. 
And there we go. And of course, remember, standing still increases accuracy, so there's more chance of them actually knocking in Yuna, or at least making it very, very unhealthy. And there we go, almost dead. Looks like they make it out of there, actually. In the meanwhile, we are seeing continued efforts right here in the south. Oh dear, these engineers are going to be running for a lot more. Yes, there we go. Engineer team down for Stephen or Stefan or whatever. And the Americans are now moving in towards this fuel point, but of course, barbed wire in this case actually provides protection. Although, mind you, you should be careful about placing the barbed wire too close to the point, as otherwise, if it is too close, the unit can still take it. I learned that the hard way. And now, a bit of barbed wire here to essentially deny cover in case of a frontal assault, but of course, Stephen doesn't care about that. He's going to be a bit of a rogue and attack from the other direction where there's absolutely no barbed wire to stop their movements and there we go catching the pioneers false gun is in the slightly wrong position bunker going up for Vlad medic bunker away here to sort of take advantage of all these false guns and have these four teams which is good no but anything else going on though Rifle running into problems a bit out of cover in fact where are the rest of the force cannons? Apparently they just rendered this neutral and then wired it off. I suppose that counts for some sort of work. And now the Ravner forced onto a retreat. The long way around, of course, due to this butt wire, which does actually save them from any heavier losses. And a mine killing a poor unfortunate pioneer while the Americans once more go for the cut off point, thus denying more munitions to the Wehrmacht. To the brave lads. Oh, the comfortable Vlad. Rifleman sneaking up here. Jolly good, jolly good. And some engineers now moving in to deal with that fuel point. Things are looking a bit edgy. Yeah, po lots of points being cut off. And there we go. Medic bank on the way. Fo Pioneers hiding in the church. Fulton is laying down lots more part. Why, though, they might want to react to this sort of pincer movement going towards his own cut off point. Oh dear, everybody's points being cut off. That's just silly. Only difference. Oh, apparently, these engineers are not entirely sure what they're supposed to do. Cut the wire. You've got wire cutters, anyways. Point being rendered neutral. Then another point cut off. So both sides essentially only have a bit of fuel. Although Vlad has secured his munitions point, while the American hasn't. So that's actually a slight advantage to Vlad for the moment. Flamethrower pioneers ready in the barracks. Ever. Falcon is advancing. Skirmish phase has been reached. Kampfkraft sends up for Vlad. Again, he might be going for the Sturm Armory. Some armored cars later on. Riveman down. More on the move. And of course, there we go. Wire cut. Fuel point might soon be rendered neutral. Attention. The enemy and there we go. No fuel to the Wehrmacht. To the Kampfkraft there. Slight engagement over here. Falcon is quickly outnumbered, although they do manage to drop one rifle right before getting to the house. <laughs> More infantry support on the way. But quickly retaking the cutoff point, unlike the American commander who has not really gotten around to it, even which simply required one engineer to cut it and secure it. Instead, he's still managing to secure the fuel point, although again, he can't connect to it. And a quick counter attack moving in. At the same time, veterans on the way for the infantry of Vlad. Forward, supply lines are broken. And the engineers are pushed off. Got munitions over there being secured. Jolly good, jolly good. But still, if you could just get this point reconnected, he would easily have an advantage in resources. First rank of veterans are up. Rifleman pushed away. For infantry, basically means they heal themselves a bit slightly. First eight course, if you like to imagine it like that. This is my most hated strat. I'm not entirely sure if he means. He hates the strand used by Vlad, or if the one he uses is the one Wehrmacht players hates the most. But an armored car rushes in, and Vlad is a bit unprotected against that. Only having the pants of Faust to defend himself. Holding out nicely so far. Holding up quite nicely, actually. Slightly tenuous position, more rifle false gunners could be moving in. Rifle are clearly outnumbered. And there we go on the run. 
and engineers moving forward, but then again they might as well just step aside and let the armored car do the job. And hurrah, hurrah, a new front open up once more. And let's go actually have a look at Steven, or Steven. Let's just beat this up, it's going to be a bit of a long game actually. So to make things a bit easier. And also watch some of the boring parts, I suppose. Basically just a bit of securing territory, a bit of advances. Nothing huge, nothing vast. Slight engagement here. Volkskane is being pushed off by riflemen. Vlad having his Sturm armory up, so we might be seeing a Sturm Geschütz or a armored car, I suppose. So if he's getting an armored car, I would recommend upgrading it to a Puma to deal with this armored car. And looks like Stephen or Stephen or whatever is laying down quite a few mines. This is a good job. This is nice. Jolly good, in fact. And in particular doing so within his opponent's territory, what he actually has captured, which leads to a sort of thing where the opponent doesn't actually expect it. Trust me, that can really be nasty. So in this case, jolly nice. Jolly nice. And Vlad, though, having laid down some mines himself. Good move, good move. All of his faults is captured over here in a van. Rather vast infantry force. About two squads worth of infantry. That's the regular Wehrmacht's infantry squad. It was about nine to ten men, although that was in the later stages of war. Actually down to nine men. Armour coming about. We are seeing an observation post up there for Vlad. Armoured car, but will it be getting the Puma gun or... No, he's gone Blitzkrieg. Stormtroopers are on the way. The more veteran troops of the 17th. Possibly troops from the Panzerlehr. Falskan is getting hit. Armoured car moving up on these engineers. This could end up badly for them. And larger firefight right here. Right from rather surrounded. Falskan is on all sides and now the armoured car. And nothing to really stop them. The armoured car down here. Stormtroopers with a panzer trick. Get out of there, Mr. Armored Cart. Get out of there. But apparently, the Stormtroopers can't hit for now. Could it be that Steven was actually trying for demo charge? No, he was trying for this. I mean, it rec I'd recommend actually getting a demo charge and then basically laying down to that bunker and knocking it out. I mean, it can be as similar as that. Either way, they'll continue fighting rifle and running out of the cemetery. And a mine goes off, n destroying the engine of the armored car. Oh dear! And only folks can so funny and by, and they can't we really do stuff like that. Repairing that is, sticky bombs on the way, and an anti-tank gun. Good move there. A medic station though would also be nice, I think. And Greyhound moving in from the south with armored skirts. Apparently, oh my goodness! Actually, moving about down there without armored skirts. That was insane. Just a bit drive by here. Troops can now make sticky, sticky bombs, bombs ready, anti-tank gun ready. Might be an idea to get a supplied upgrade or get some more units, something. You've certainly got the resources. Be careful about floating, Stephen or Stefan. Careful, careful. Yep. Armour comes sneaking about through the south, so a second one. And running straight into the American armoured car, that was less splendid. Those stormtroopers nearby now equipped with dual panzer effects. A bit aggressive, although could also end up in the hands of the Americans if he's not careful. Personally, I prefer sort of a mix of a panzer and then some assault rifles. That means they can handle a bit of each. And the, the anti tank dude is something a bit more solid as well, perhaps an upgraded Puma. Oh dear, there's a mine right there and destroyed engine. Armored car not looking good. Though it looks like Vlad is getting veterans for them, that is good in fact. Though no further veterans for the infantry. Less good. Just need to sort of adjust this headset. Oh my goodness, mine goes off. False gunner team absolutely devastated. That was a bit of a blow there. Pioneers moving forwards. Oh! And they set off the mine, knocking out the armored car. Last man not looking too good either, trying to repair it, but it's no use. He can only look in despair and horror as the armored car explodes right in front of his eyes. But a nice move here for the cutoff point. Puma has been made. Jolly good. Falskan is now holding the line as Rifen are advancing. Obviously, grenades though from Stefan J. 
F, that could have been a great move here, or BARs, no. Just light cover by the false gun design, better cover. Oh, there we go, now going for both upgrades. Still, supplied upgrade will also be nifty. And there we go, basically getting all the upgrades. No, he's... He can't seem to decide, he goes to the supplied upgrade and now for grenades. Alright then, let's see if he sticks to that decision. Interesting enough, there's been no doctrinal choice. Stormtroopers caught out in the middle of everything. They got discovered. Bundle grenade, but it's not enough. And heavy losses for them, but the Volkskan is still doing pretty well. In fact, resulting in a full retreat for the Americans. We do see a Triason as well. That's good, actually. Armor can't break through here. Nebelwerfer advances to support his Kampfgruppe. That's nice. I see Stormtroopers, though, close to dying. Will it happen? No, looks like they make it out of there. Nebelwerfer though might Grenades not be so arrived. lucky. And Puma on the prowl, three infantry kills. Engineers laying down mines again behind enemy lines. See that? Trying to render that point neutral. Infantry needs to secure that building. Come on, Vladdy. Enemy unit down. No. Oh dear, it's actually going to be rendered neutral. That's 260 manpower down. And a no more false grenadiers for Vlad if that's the case. like the Americans are on the move again having slightly been forced off the map but for how long still able to do quite a bit of damage Puma hunting some Americans more engineers on the way looks like some have been lost no mines from lab though no mines bit of a wasted opportunity I think there Volkskan is reinforcing Pioneers as well. Stug on the move. Looks like more veterancy. Nope. Oh, that was also been a nice move right there. Of course, to mind that. No doctrine, though. Could have gone infantry. Puma versus armored car. Fuel point going up there. An observation point. And the tank is going to be needed in the north. He's actually continuing it. And Vlad seems to be doing nothing to stop it, but now it's finished. Might have been better for Steven to actually drop it. Armakar needs to get out of there now. Dear. Armakar down. Puma and Stug advances. Sturm schutz. Anti tank gun is quite exposed. Oh dear, oh dear. Rifle moving up. Caught them getting off a sticky bomb. Yes, indeed. Stug getting sticky bombed. And managed to clear out the crew on the anti tank gun. Renry. Steven with only sticky bombs to deal with all of this. Floating resources. Bad Steven or Stefan. Very bad. Fulton is coming with the range of the hand machine gun. <coughs> range is getting called onto the field. We're hitting one of our forward placements, trying to take our territory. And some neighbor for fire. Lovely. No, no attempt taking this point. Fulton is are getting down. pinned. Neither of rockets knock out the cafe, hit the lake. But captured. not really doing much to their intended target. The engineers going for the point. And our rangers are moving in. Bazookas at hand. Puma in a slightly off position. Getting hammered. So is the Stug. And Tatanga could be recruited and reused against them. Unit down. And a flame for a pioneer team went down in the center. Stormtroopers trying to knock out the heavy machine gun nest, but they don't quite succeed either. Might be an idea to turn out the anti tank gun before the Stug leaves its field of fire completely. And one good shot there, meaning the Stug is out of control. So quite a few losses there for Vlad. Medic Bank is still there, but so far not managing much in Wounded. Looks like Vlad has, in fact, no, oh, never mind. I thought we lost a it's more full scanner teams. Mine goes off. Oh dear! <laughs> Destroying the engine of the Puma. What rotten luck! Puma almost went down there. Basically, just a few shots of anything, and that Puma could be going down. 
But where are the Rangers to do such a thing? They've been forgotten by Steven. Oh, come on. Get them moving. And of course, also get a medic station up, I think. And again, start floating resources. It's not really a bit fitting. Observation post going down. Stormtroopers moving in. Needleberg firing up. Barkman charging in at the Puma. A, bit ni a nice amount of kills. Puma gun is not bad as such. Again, it's an effect, but there we go. Out of control. Needleberg for exposed as well. Enemy unit down. If Steven was really cheeky, he could even try to steal it. Will he get the crew? Yes, indeed. Nebula for crew dead. The false cannons are going to make a pros the prospect of taking it a bit less worse off. And I think an infantry team went down. Yes, indeed. Rockman dead. But le and again, don't float resources, please. You even have the points for it. I mean, there's no point in it. Looks like he's going for tank even now. Might have been armor he actually wanted to go for. But let us return to Vladdy. Grenades getting exchanged. Assault, in fact. The Rangers on the run. From the might of the Wehrmacht. Medic bunker half full and it looks like he's going up for a Panzer Command himself. So Tank Depot goes as Panzer Command. At the same time going for weapon support center. That seems a bit excessive. Can't you just stick to one? Good bit of harassment right there by Steven. I would have loved to see more mines from him, in particular those aggressive mines within opponent territory. Those are the ones that really do a lot. And going for constantly mining this area as well. Jolly good. We're losing territory. And mine gets hit. Some forces will be needed to deal with that. First gun is with MP forties. Looking a bit grim there though. And there we go, American force moving in. And we are seeing Thompson submachine guns up for Rangers. And lots of grenades going everywhere. Stormtroopers almost down. Oh dear, down to only one man. Looks like they will be making it, my brothers. False grenadiers. No further veterans has been made for Vlad's infantry, so. Rangers are getting stunned, but this I don't think this will save the false grenadiers. Oh dear, this could be a loss. No, looks like he will be making it. Heinz will be making it. I think some riflemen up there died a horrible death. Which is less great. He cancelled the tank depot. He's getting a sniper. Come on, Stephen. Decide, decide. Seems to be a bit of indecision on his behalf. Quite a bit, actually. But he has the sniper, so get it to the front. Start sniping some krauts. In the meanwhile, Panzer IV and Ritterkreuz on the way for Blatt. The Panzer there providing the heavy assets. In this case. Yes, Captain. Force guns getting reinforced, stormtroopers as well. Force gun is pushed away from the north. Apparently, already some Ritter Kreutz here in the center. Watching with their assault rifles. And Camille from. Oh dear, there we go, sniper joining in. Force Knight's taking heavy losses, veterans one for the rifleman, jolly good. Still need to use more resources if he's floating again, floating bad. Very bad, rifleman going for the cutoff point. Ritter Kreutz, Force Knight and Stormtroopers could be moving in. Panzer IV in the center, jolly good, there, nice position. Ritter Kreutz awfully close to the mines. A bit too close for my liking. And sending in the Panzer IV on its own. Not the best idea, but apparently in this case it works. Lots of harassment. 
riflemen almost down. Reds of Kreutz with their assault rifles tearing through them. Fox comes with MP40, we'll be seeing a grenade. Come on, grenade, yes. Pine number grenade. Oh. And four Fox grenades and a Pioneer team. Oh dear, that was terrible. Although gained more veterans for the riflemen, and now the Reds of Kreutz are moving into the veterans to riflemen. The Reds of Kreutz could still be taking losses. No, they do manage it, but still heavy losses. And some engineers went down. Horrific losses. Tank Depot going up again, but looks like it will be staying this time around. Yeah. BAR's up for the Stefan troops. Now again, he is lacking a bit in infantry. Again, a medic station would have been nice, would have helped in the long run. Again, stop bloody floating resources. Wait, has he been doing it now? No, he's for once not. That's something. Here. Mind you, he is rank 13, so he's not a complete novice. Blatt holding on despite some nasty losses, including the full loss of a Volkskanade team, and getting more Ritterkreuz. Interesting enough, this medic bank has still been able to, unable to present with him with the full Grenadier team. Mines going off again, again. And good aggressive mining again, that's what we like to see from Stephen FJ, making things a lot less certain for Vlad, but safe. Which can rather lead to a slightly more paranoid mindset. Rifman streaming into the center and had tank on ready. Pioneers trying to clear mines. Oh dear, the stormtroopers set it off! <laughs> will the mines will Pioneers make it? Yes, indeed! Assault grenades from the stormtroopers, but they're caught in the middle between two riflemen with BARs. This can end up badly for them. Grenade, stun grenade, stuns both teams. Panzer IV moves in. Fultz is moving in from the south. I'm hearing some sort of assault rifles, yes, indeed. Ritter Kreutz. Streaming right into two riflemen with BAR, some veterans in two, this and in negative cover, be careful about, there we go, suppressive fire, one of the weaknesses of the Knight's Cross, basically uses suppressive fire from the Knight riflemen, and they can quickly be stopped, oh dear, only one mate, it only one veteran, and tank destroyer moving in, more assault grenades on this clump of riflemen, false guys moving in, Rita Kreutz has flanked the anti-tank gun, opening up the way for the Panzer IV, though the M10 can reasonably well knock out a Panzer IV actually, there's of course the Volkskrieg join in with a Panzerfaust. And there we go, in fact lots of Panzerfaust. And Rangers being fought off by the Knight's Cross. Quite a bit of fighting all of a sudden going on. And quite raw fighting. Sniper moving up so far. I don't really think Steve Stefan is getting the most out of his sniper, which is really a shame. I mean, again, 340 manpower really just push with him, support your infantry pushes. He's not really doing that. He's not really managing it, and now he's using full to try and take that anti tank gun, but the enemy is too close. Sticky bombs on the Panzer IV. Anti tank gun sorted out. Dual sticky bombs. The Panzer IV could be lost. Oh dear, again, do not send in your anti tank guns that close to enemy infantry. I mean, Stephen basically just needs to send something in, perhaps even that tank destroyed just for one finishing blow. And more infantry veterans on the way still. Panzer IV lost in a most bad way. I'm pretty sure the Panzer will be a bit annoyed about that. If they could knock it out. Reds are quite getting sniped. By the looks of things, or no, did they get the sniper? I think they actually managed. That was a bit rubbish by Steven. Again, he might doesn't seem to be great with snipers, in which case the idea might actually be for him to basically just then not use them or get better. I mean, I think he might only then have gotten one or two kills and then... Yeah, indeed. Not really good at all for Steven. Though he has veterans, he free rival, but still... Unit preservation and sniper certainly. There we go, some grenadiers out, but they're on their own and surrounded. Might want to get them out of there now. With Sugmena. And they barely make it. But another infantry force moving in. Lots of submachine guns, assault rifles. Ritterkreuz caught in there, everything. Stormtroops and our Ritterkreuz team goes down. Oh dear. Quite bloody fighting. Might be an idiot to basically move towards it, towards the bridge. I suppose this building and hold out the assault. 
That's one C3 Raven, of course, being quite dangerous with the BARs. And there we go, Falcon is getting torn through in seconds. Suppressed, in fact. Pinned, getting killed. Razor Card's moving in, but now they. Oh, they got murdered by those. Veterans see free revive and of course no supplied upgrades help with that. Nothing further from the tank depot, no actual tanks which could also have been of help. Ooh, looking grim for Vladdy. Wait, I, said, I wouldn't say that. It's looking grim for Vlad and his Kampfgruppe. Lots of Ritterkreuz dead, although it's certainly not all beer and skittles for Stephen FJ either. He's also taking a few losses, although I think in those cases many of them were quite unnecessary like that sniper. And again, floating resources and command points. I mean, come on. Territory cut off you can easily get an off map combat group very soon at the very least. Or you can get a Howard, sir. Although I think in that case I might recommend actually getting an observation post on one of those munition points. Come on, decide, decide. Make up your mind now getting a heavy machine gun. Red Decoits caught on their own. Only one man making a run for it. And like a true German hero, he gets away. Veteran C3 up now for Vlad. No further armor, no Panthers, which could actually have been of help versus those M10s. Not entirely sure though why he's going for the heavy machine gun team here. Although supposed to protect one of the victory points would be a nice move. Showing how you could do it, although of course all you just lay down a machine gun emplacement. And again, why he's spending resources when he could just go for an off map combat group? I mean, you could probably have gotten a mortar and a tank destroyer that way anyways. And probably at a lower cost. So why he's doing that is a bit beyond me. Seems to be a bit unfortunate doctrinal usage. And I'd certainly recommend at least then getting a Sherman to perhaps you know, deal with that German infantry, those scouts. Mines down, and mines going off. Raw. Magic Bunker though could get knocked out by those M10s. Grenadiers, with only one Pandrick. Could be funny if he try and fill an LMG. A grenade here could do well. From either side really, but there we go. Medic Banker under fire, right and left there on their own, the mo rest are actually doing something up here. Come on, Steven, push forwards, forwards. Leaving the hand machine gun there seems a bit odd. A lots of odd decision all of a sudden from Stephen FJ or Steven. Come on, make a decision, man. Lots of Pandrix being locked out of those M10s. And a mine killing two false grenades outright. Veteran C2 Rangers, that's actually pretty nasty. Although for some reason they're running away from the. No, they're trying to sort of deal with those medics right there. And now going after those two false grenades that remain with their assault submachine guns. Down to one man. Will he make it? Falskins could be running into a mine, or that one the chap might. Enemy no, did. he did. Losing Vlad, a Falskins team, but then. Oh, there we go. Although a grenade here would have been excellent, excellent, but no such luck. Now it's too late. And again, basically dodging it right there. Nice the cross are too close now. Falskins running faster, but there we go. Rangers forced away. Well, another force fully equipped with a hit Panzer X moves in. They'll get stopped by the submachine gun, which does suppress Veterans 2 and 3 gun it is much faster. Little fun fact there. Lots of tank destroyers right there, but no much greater use for them. Although now there might be, since a Tiger has arrived, to assist Vlad in his fight against those pesky Americans. More mines from Steven. Good, good. He's even getting artillery, but again, why no off map combat groups? I mean, come on. Come on. Are you utterly daft? Still holding most of the territory, and went for the fuel pump once more. 
And Reisman spotted by the Tiger, but there's no armor support or infantry support for the Tiger, though that's less great. And lots of mines everywhere right here in the center. Artillery also ready to support, but again he's floating command points. Which could be used either for a howitzer or an off-map combat group. And again, after three points, I mean, it actually goes slower the rate of acquisition. So again, there's no point really in floating them. So absolutely no idea why Steven insists on floating. Command points like that. Mortar firing away. Rangers moving in, but there's no support. And he's moving in the M10s. Oh, he's perhaps hoping for a long flank. Hoping to catch the Tiger in a nasty position. While his own men, though, were getting slaughtered in the center. Another M10 moving in. Enemy unit Assault on the Rangers in the cover. And there we go. Forcing them away. M10 moves in. Tiger almost knocks out its own Knight's Cross. Mine hit for the tank destroyer. Oh dear. More mines hit though, but this time the Stormtroopers. And Tiger getting hit from all sides. I tell you, on the center. Though not on the Tiger, though that would have been a nice move. Storms though take losses. And get completely knocked out, thus losing Vlad to Panzer Shrex. M10 down. Tiger heavily damaged though. Mortar down. Knights cross Grenadiers heavy losses. Quite the fight right here in the center. And if that other M10 perhaps had stayed in the fight, they might have been able to do more damage to that Tiger, but apparently not. Thought Steven was getting an anti tank gun again. No off map combat groups. Come on, get some. We're losing ground out there. And mining this point. This is good. Mine here. Sehr good. Except for those false guns who are now getting hit by the M10 and must, might even get squished. And I, oh dear, this headset is getting a bit tiresome. Oh dear, he managed to crush one false kind here. No idea why he's sending in on loan, though against that tiger, which is now veteran 2 Calling in artillery on it, though. However, will this work out? Looks like the tiger manages in time because its engine has been damaged. So never mind. Come on, Steven. Prove yourself to be a man. Get the off-map combat group. Hurrah. Germans are at least sensible either way. Speeding things up a bit. They can't go in the first infantry and keep fighting. And whoops, my pardons. Another larger engagement breaks out. And once more assault saves the day. Although grenade gets locked at the grenadiers. One man down. Ritter Kreutz falls away the riflemen. Anti-tank gun in an unsupported position. This is bad. And again, note. This is not a great building to protect against this area, since again, this is a pretty blind spot. Although it looks like the Knight's Cross might be standing in it, but still they can quickly get out of it. No further support, and again, no off-map combat groups. Oh, come on, Stephen. Make a decision. Hamish is getting pushed away. And once more, going for a bit of harassment up there. Looking a bit grim for Vlad in the victory point department. Second supplied upgrade. Losing ground out there. Well, fighting continues up here. We're also seeing up here. Oh dear, veteran C3, false kind of veteran C3 riflemen. The riflemen are just tearing through them. Oh dear. And quickly send them packing. Knight's Cross not doing too well either. Rifleman taking losses though as the Tiger does its best to support the infantry. Funny is up and repairing. Pushed by the Americans. M10s. Tank. Anti-tank gun. They could perhaps get it. Tiger turns about though. Come on. Push. Steven you have the advantage. Push it. Use it. Will he get something again? And now Vlad also seems to be floating resources. A bit unfortunate from both sides. A bit unfortunate I would say. Vlad could be getting veterancy, he could be getting a Stu 42 apparently. 
Might have recommended a panther or something else, but 242 does nicely as well. Almost done to queuing north. It's a kite, it's a kite, holding out in the remains of a crater on the road. But are quickly getting assaulted from several positions, tag of the provide support. And veteran C3 rifleman versus a veteran C2 storm. Oh, Bitzer. Two men down, and the rest make a quick run for it. And how it's up now for Steven F JF. That's going to be quite a bit of a problem if we can get off some good shots. Down to 66 points though from Vlad, that's pretty bad, he needs to retake some points right now. Fultzner is mowing in, MP40 is blazing. And sending in two tank destroyers but without much support against a Tiger which he knows has certainly some veterans here. I think that was a less grand decision by Steven, much less grand. Again, at least you should have tried to go for an off-map combat group. Bank almost down there. We got artillery firing in support of him. Tank destroy out of control. The other one rushing through the base. Kennedy is heavily wounded. Need to get out of there. Ruxuk Manor. Akshon. And there we go. A nice push there by Vlad. Going for the cutoff point again. Doing some damage to the anti-tank gun in the process. But Rangers are moving in with quite a few kills to the name. And Tank Destroyer makes it back to safety. Hurrah! And then the Rangers move away. Come on, make a decision, men. And Volkskan is in a bit of trouble. Medic Bunk cannot get repaired though by Vlad. Veteran C3 on the way for the armor. That is good. Oh dear, the last Volkskan has died. Tiger moves in, tank destroyers get pushed away. Still, Veteran C3 for infantry for his armor, that's going to help quite a bit. And now artillery firing right into the center. No anti-tank gun to right to support because it's too far away. Again, he's not really been doing well with that anti-tank gun in support of anything. Finding way, and there we go. Good hit on the Tiger, but not good enough either. We are losing territory. Down to 42 points from Vlad, though. Out in this case didn't do much again. Off map combat group for Stephen F. J. F. Might have been an idea earlier on, but again he floated resources, and again you rarely f float resources unless you have a very specific idea with them, like say get a tiger or something like that. And again, keep the anti-tank gun ready to react to the opponent. Don't have it pointed back in the direction of your base where there's not going to be coming anything from. Got to move towards here. Kanye is going off for this. And Artillery getting called in though. Has to be careful. Get them out of there, Vlad. I said get them out of there. Oh dear, he's not getting out there. He's trying to take it. Down to two men. They're not going to make it, Vlad. Down to one man and a Panzer Jack. And then he finally tries leaving behind a Panzer Jack surprise for his opponent. That was less grand. Assault on the rifle and Knight's Cross charging in. Going for a cutoff point as well here, forcing away Vlad from the front right there. Jolly good, jolly good. Although he's down to only having a few knights cross. Osman though has arrived. Medic Banker surprisingly enough still standing. It's 242 getting off a good shot. Thirty-five points for Vlad. Panzer shake for Steven. If he decides to take it, to grasp the challenge. 
out of farming. Doing a bit more damage this time around. Let's just speed this up a bit. But the coach running right into the right. Rangers taking heavy losses to the submachine guns. 2 for 2. The fine support. Veterans C3 for the Rangers. Good heavens. So that's a Veteran C3 Ranger team and a Veteran C3 Rifle team. That's quite nasty. Manpower Blitz now up for Vlad as well. Be comfortable with doing alright. For now. The Sugas though not managing much against the Armored Skirt. Sticky Bomb joining in. Damaged engine. Stu 42 taking quite a few beatings. Could have been nice if there had been an anti tank gun, but again, someone decided to move it away and not even recruit this one. Again, Stephen FK doesn't seem to be quite as strong on the sort of strategic decisions in the long term. Looks like he's trying to fire against here. Nicely hitting a house. Twenty-five points left for Vlad. He's managed to basically stabilize it barely. Rangers and Rifleman moving in. Has he lost the veterans free? No, they're there. Need to have a quick force away the Americans from there. Good, good. And looks like he's finally getting an off-map combat group with several anti-tank guns, which could be of great use. An armored car and some riflemen. The question is, how will he use it? If he will use it. Moving in for the victory point once more. Copy using that Panzer Shake. Denied to the Americans. And I'll tell you if I get the Knights Cross, but not before the man to secure it. Minor fighting here, armored car moving in. Getting hammered though by the Ostwind. Gunner killed. That's less great. Both anti tank guns moving in. Tiger doing what it can. Long shot, that's 242. Hemorrhaging victory punch though. And the Knights cross with a Panzer Schreck, although that does severely limit that. And time for Village, and there we go, getting hunted down by Veterans C3 Rangers. Oh dear! And the Knights the Cross die a horrific death while the Tiger moves in from the north. And no one decides to take that Panzer Jack. Anti tank guns finally getting a move on. About damn time. Or well, apparently he managed to lose one. Which would be less spectacular. Osman getting hit. Going for the victory point. Rangers need to get back. But back, I mean back, get reinforced. And the howitzer once more fires. The Ostwind is slightly safe, the anti tank gun doesn't quite feel so. Come on, Steven, make a decision. This rather seems to be his weakness. Well, let's try not to speed this up a bit. Until he gets the pioneers, we just managed to pick up that pantry again. And the tiger rushes into everything. Anti tank and decrude. I'm tending what I can. And the M10 vanishes in a puff of smoke and fire as Blitzkrieg is launched, increasing the rate of fire of all German units. Tiger though is slightly in trouble. 
but not before the anti-tank gets decrewed. Another M10 moving in. Need with a firing. Assault going on here, but again, increased rate of fire even from the infantry. Well, it looks like the Ostwind might be getting knocked out. Yes, indeed. And the riflemen actually retreat. Goodness gracious, you could have just split them up. And let one get stunned, let the other push on. M10 in a bit of trouble, another one on the way, just get moving, Steven, just get moving. And a Panzer IV actually arrives, for 23 and everything. M10 down. GG. There we go, game over. I lost for the first infantry division as the Kampfgruppe Vlad pushed through town and secured it. And of course, what can we learn from this? I mean, the lessons are sort of, you know, a bit, well, obvious, I suppose, in one sense. I mean, the problem here, rather, from Stephen was indecision. He seemed rather indecisive at several points what to do. He could easily have gone for an off-map combat group, gotten something out of that, but he didn't. He basically went f back and forth between the weapon support and the tank depot, again losing precious time. His snipe again, he wasn't sure what to do with him, so he lost him quite quickly without having managed to do much with them. And he could easily have, if he'd floated resources without anything to build with, I mean build in placement, protect the victory points he had, but again, nothing quite happened. He constantly sort of went back and forth, but never was able to really get a grasp on a firm decision. So there we go, rather a lot of flaws there. From that though, Medic Bunker nicely. Good job with the veteran chief fighting on. Might have been better with a Puma earlier on, and of course, sort of switching out the anti-tank duties between some more units. But, uh, there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends, and if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.